and gentlemen, my name is Tom Jones. I'm the chairman of the Keelan Concord. I'd like to welcome you to the 13th Keelan Concord. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you have many things to do today, but we were blessed with beautiful weather. A little, little soppy in the morning, but uh, it turned into a great day. Not very hot. Those of you that were here last year, it was a swelter. So we uh, glad we got one because uh, it wasn't so hot. I want to also thank all of our sponsors, not all of them right now, but I'd like to thank our sponsors for making this possible. I'd like to thank all the people that show up. I'd also like to thank our judges and all of our volunteers. I would like at this time to turn the program over to two people that are both car nuts. They enjoy the heck out of doing this. They've spent all morning out here. Uh, it is uh, Jess Kirk and Sean Moody from the KYT. Well, hello everybody. You've been listening to me banter on all day long, so I appreciate your patience. I've had a wonderful day. I hope you guys have too. Uh, the good news is I'm almost done, so you don't have to listen to me a lot anymore. Uh, everybody, like you said, Sean Moody's going to join me up here. How are you doing, Sean? Doing great, Jesse. Great to be out here. I, I told you when we had a planning meeting the other day, I was going to slip Chris Bailey at 20 and hope for the best, and we certainly got it. It's fantastic today. It is. It turned quite beautiful, like, like Tom said. It's just a little damp this morning. I think it just made the ground soft and hard. Like we mentioned, those are two awesome planes. Uh, we, we appreciate all forms of motivation around here. Uh, so we're glad to have those guys flying overhead. Uh, nothing like two birds that can fly at about 230 knots. Isn't that pretty awesome? And you can't beat that sound either. Exactly. So, so like I said, uh, the, all the waiting is done. I need to hush and let's get this rolling. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you to our many sponsors. Keeneland, of course, will let use this area. Wells Advisors, Audi of Lexington, Bluegrass Motorsport, Maserati of Cincinnati, and the UK Federal Credit Union. There he is. He was hiding inside the mystery machine. Got to make a big entrance there. Can you go, Dr. Seems like a word? Well, I guess you've already blown the secret, but we had seven well-trained judges from 10 to 15 who went out and spent their whole morning, and they actively picked 27 of the first choices. So that just goes to show you the quality of the cars in this year. They narrowed it down to five finalists, and before you, you see a 1937 Peugeot, 37 Peugeot Dharma 402 Coupe. There it is, and the kids loved it, they picked it, and you guys are responsible for this award. We couldn't be more appreciative, thank you guys. Just a little bit big to slide in through the window there, so. Congratulations. Thank you again, Joan, for, for, for making this wonderful award possible. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's almost as good as the Best in Show Award. We're appreciative to have so many people out here. Thank you all very much. Yeah, well, I don't know how you're still standing, man, but I appreciate you here. you have any words for today? Uh, you can run around in circles. You still don't get any word. <laughs> We had a, a, a very nice uh, paddock challenge. Uh, this, this year, uh, I'd like to have a representative from the Porsche Club come out, and also the, British, the Sterling British Club come out. We do, uh, the paddock challenge is, is actually uh, two awards. One is a, a trophy, which is for the mark that has the, uh, the highest uh, total giving uh, so, uh, and then the other is the highest giving per car. The idea is we have tried to do uh, an equalization between the uh, big clubs and the small clubs. So if a club's only got, you know, 20, uh, 20 uh, uh, members in it and they show up and, and everyone gives, then they can get the, uh, the highest uh, uh, giving per car. So that's the way that works. So with the uh, highest giving uh, trophy, uh, 
we have um, the Porsche Club. Well, actually, for the, the Pata Challenge in total, it was $4,923.45. Thanks to everybody that donated for their favorite mark. So that's pretty cool. The uh, Porsche Club gave $3,119.45. So the club uh, the, uh, gets the trophy again for a year. And here we have two of the Porsche Club uh, members. Uh, Neil Fisher, who is our events chair, and also Tom Locke, who is a member that uh, is instrumental in the, in the Keeneland Concord, and uh, trying to be humble, I'm the president. <laughs> what can I say? Great club, and we love being here, we love the support, and uh, we love Keeneland, so thank you very much, fellas. We kept the trophy, and for the plaque, for the second year in a row, the Sterling British Club, won the track, won the uh, plaque for the highest giving uh, per car that, you, that was here. So thanks to them, and they have like $23.07 per car. Thank you. Big round of applause, everybody. The Paddock Challenge, every single penny down to that last 45 cents goes directly to the University of Kentucky Children's Hospital. Uh, so everything they gave went to the children. We really appreciate it. Okay, are you ready, Sean? I think we're all set. Everybody ready out there? Yeah. Here come the classes. We're going to start with class one. Our first class is antique through 1924. Uh, this is the Nichols Farm Cup. Yeah, and these cars are sometimes referred to as the brass era cars. They had a lot of brass fittings on them back in the day when they were built. And, uh, of course, we'd like to thank the following exhibitors for bringing their cars in today. With a 1908 Lozier Touring brought to you by Jim Grundy, also, the 1909 Stanley Model R Roadster by John P. Clark that we saw putting around earlier. We also have a 1914 Ford Model T fire truck that came to us from Pete and Joan Hester. Okay, the runner-up for the Nichols Farm Cup is a 1911 EMF 30 racer brought to us by Dale Kritz Jr. And the winner of the Nichols Farm Cup is the 1919 Pierce Arrow Model 66 A4 Open Tour that came to us today from Robert and Alice Jepson. Should be coming around the corner here any minute, guys. We've got to have some suspense for the very first award of the day, for sure. That's it. We don't want to be in too much of a hurry. Yeah, I think technically, according to the cards, we're ahead of schedule, but... I think this uh, green is burning through my toes a little bit, so we might we might be in a bit of a hurry, but okay, I hear it firing up. You know what there I thought it is. is when Jim was up here and said this has been the best organized and most advanced it's been. Oh well, we love him, but he just had to slow it down somehow. All right, everybody, big round of applause for this beautiful piece of machinery. Congratulations, have a beautiful car. Very wonderful piece. And actually, I was told it was owned by Fatty Harbor for one of the turn of the century. That's right, yeah. Very cool little car. All right, so we're going to move on now to class two. This is the vintage 1925 to 1949, the Calumet Farm Cup. We want to thank the, uh, the following people for bringing their cars in today. We've got a 1931 Ford Model A town sedan that came to us from Doug and Anna Sharon. A 1933 Chrysler C06 four-door sedan that came to us from Bob and Marilyn McMullen. Also, we had a 1934 Chrysler CA convertible RS coupe brought by Brian and Bella Dyer. Uh, and a 1938 Ford five-window coupe uh, came all the way with us with, uh, from Roger and Andrew Mason. All right, the runner-up for the Calumet Farm Cup is a 1939 Hudson 112 coupe convertible. That came to us from Mike and Susie Sheridan. 
And the winner of the Calumet Farm Cup is Craig Pearson in his 1931 Studebaker President State Sedan. Here he comes, everybody. Give him a big round of applause. That is flawless. It is absolutely a beautiful vehicle. Uh, the one downside of being the guy up on the microphone all day is I don't get to come out and quite stare at these vehicles as long as I want to. Uh, but there is no doubt why he won his class. Thank you again very, very much. Congratulations. standard with a little seatbelt for the trophies, though. That would have been a handy add-on. Well, I guess back then they didn't quite realize they were going to have to hold all that down as well. So that one, yeah, I'm sure he's won many a trophy. So Coming up next is our uh, Classic Car Club of America, 1925 to 1948. Uh, this is the Airdrie Stud Farm Cup. Uh, first one of our presenters was the 1931 Packard 833, brought to us by Cy Hanks. We have a 1932 Chrysler Imperial CH, came to us from William and Tina Sipko. A 1940 Packard 160 Model 1803 that came to us from Len and Linda Royston. The runner-up for the Airdrie Stud Farm Cup is a 1938 Packard Victoria Convertible, uh, brought to us from the Evergreen Historic Automobiles Collection. And the winner of the Airdrie Stud Farm Cup is Jim and Gail Cowan. They brought us a 1931 Cadillac 355A7 passenger. And here they come. Hi there, congratulations. It feels like most modern cars are getting a little bit large these days, but I guess we just got used to what was built in the 1980s, uh, because even I could stretch out and have quite a nap in the back of this vehicle. That wouldn't be bad at all. Thank you all very, very much. Another big round of applause. Class four, we've got the Coach Built Classics, the Cobra Farm Cup. Starting off, we've got a 1927 Isota Fraschini Tebow AAS that came to us from Robert and Alice Jepson. A 1931 Chrysler Roadster from Brett Merrill. A 1932 Packard 904 Stationary Coupe from Sally and Jean Perkins. And Charles Mong brought us a 1933 Duesenberg Convertible Sedan along with a 1937 Chrysler Imperial C15 Town Car from Howard and Rosalind Crawford. The runner-up in this category, the Cobra Farm Cup, is the Patterson Collection with a 1937 Peugeot Del Mar 402 Coupe. Moving on, we're going to go into Class 5, which is uh, the Collector American, 1947 to 1975 Open. The Diamond Bay Farms Cup. Hold on. All right, this is something from the last class, but we're going to hold the suspense for just a little bit. If he can move on through, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so. While they're conversing, I will go ahead and say it again. A 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air Convertible, brought to us by Mike and Lizella Grassa, and a 1957 Ford Thunderbird, brought by David Angel. We also had Benny and Sarah Sue Coleman bringing us a 1960 Chevrolet Impala Convertible. We had a 1962 Oldsmobile Starfire Convertible from Roger and Shirley Harbison. A 1965 Pontiac Catalina Convertible that came to us from Ralph Carboni. A 1956 Cornet D500 convertible from Frank and Viola Ali. The runner-up for the Diamond A Farms Cup is Warren and Lori Woodker with a 1959 DeSoto Adventurer convertible. And the winner of the Diamond A Farm Cup 
is a 1958 Buick Limited Convertible brought to us by Ken Nago. says 1950s open road and a big old Buick convertible. Great weekend to have it on those open roads. I can imagine. I can. I'm sure he's waiting to put it down right now so he can go out for the tour this weekend. That red leather really just pops on that black paint. Oh, it does. It's so beautiful. I mean, this is the prodigious use of chrome and all the accents of the body lines. It's definitely uh, quite a stunner. We are are more than happy to have you guys up here. Thank you so much. Congratulations. All right, as this beauty rolls off the stage, we're going to move on to Class 6, the Collector American 1947 to 1975 closed. This is the Keeneland Cup. So our first one is a 1954 Hudson Hornet two-door coupe that came to us from Bob and Peggy Morgan. Next, Stanley and Linda Ingram brought a 1955 Packard Constellation. We've got a 1955 DeSoto Fire Dome hardtop from Don and Doris Holder. Gentlemen, I had a chance to talk with earlier today. George and Marianne Meeker brought us a 1956 Buick Roadmaster. Y'all don't remember, he was the one who had to go chase her down from the gas station so he, didn't, he uh, could meet his new wife. Uh, also, a 1956 Chrysler New Yorker St. Regis, brought to us by Robert from Carolyn Beck. And a 1955 Ford Thunderbird, uh, brought by Don Budby. The runner-up for the Keeneland Cup is a 1957 DeSoto Fire Sweep Sportsman, brought to us by Rosemary and Neil Sullivan. And the winner of the Keeneland Cup is Mark and Heather James with a 1956 Studebaker Golden Hawk. And here it comes. It is beautiful in that sunlight. Congratulations. I do think that's a color combination you can only pull off from the 50s. I think so. I cannot imagine a, a modern one quite going for that one. But it suits this well. That's it. it. It fits it just as good as you could ever hope for. So. And you mentioned the chrome on the last one. This one, too, hits that sunlight just perfectly. Nothing like the days where you go out and find a car that was intent to go out and just cruise around about 40 miles an hour and just look stunning. Absolutely. All right, moving on to class seven, we've got the collector foreign through 1972. This is the Claiborne Farm Cup. We had a 1958 Tatra T603 that came to us from the Lane Motor Museum. A 1959 Triumph TR3A that came to us from Anton C. Bo Bogany. Also, we had a 1960 Porsche Super 90 Roadster brought to us by Michael and Lavinia Spirito, a 1964 Jaguar E-Type Series 1 OTS uh, by Jim and Kathy Cox, a 1972 Alfa Romeo GTA Junior Stradell, if I could say that, by Andy Magnum. Well, I'm sorry, Andy. Andy Magnum hero. That sounded great to me. Uh, the runner-up of the Claiborne Farm Cup is David and Catherine Hans with a 1950 Aller J2. And the winner of the Claiborne Farm Cup is a 1970 Porsche 911S, brought to us by William Rusty Russ. Hard to miss this beautiful little orange vehicle. Its lines have definitely helped through all the way today. A beautiful styling that is just absolutely timeless. Absolutely. You can't beat that sound there either. The blue ribbon goes well with it too. But we won't talk too much about those Florida colors together. Well, you know, there, there's always something wrong that has to happen in the world. So 
but we're lucky that you brought this all the way up from uh, Florida so we can enjoy it today. Absolutely. Congratulations. Up next is Class 8, our Sports Classic Cup. This is the Shadwell Farm Cup. Uh, one of our first presenters was a 1954 Sunbeam Alpine Mark I Sports Roadster, brought to us by Tom and Trish Fisher. The 1960 Triumph TR3A, brought to us by Dan Prim Jr. A 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Convertible, uh, brought to us today by David Dabney and Gail Brady. We also had a 1963 Austin Healey BJ7 from Tom and Laura Benji. A 1963 Porsche 356 BT6 Reuter Cabriolet from Mary and Paul Siegel. Bradford and Carolyn Schisler brought us a 1970 Porsche 911 Targa Euro Special. And the runner-up for the Shadwell Farm is a 1960 Chevrolet Corvette brought to us by Brad and Marilyn Deans. And the winner of the Shadwell Farm Cup is Mitch and Pat Mitchell with a 1974 Jaguar E-Type. Here it comes on up the way here. There's no doubt, this is one of the most iconic um, classic sports cars out there. It's, it's got such distinctive lines and curves, and even today, uh, looks quite stunning. I'm sure it could be sold brand new uh, and, and still would draw an amazing crowd. So Absolutely. It's gorgeous. Like you said, those lines, you cannot beat that. Congratulations. Coming up next has to be one of at least my favorite classes because this is class nine, our posters car class. Uh, this is also the Keeneland Cup. Had a lot of very cool cars in this class. Uh, first, uh, 1996 Dodge Viper GTS uh, brought to us today by Wayne and Deanne Rowe. And a 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago brought to us by Sheldon Cap. The runner-up for the Keeneland Cup is Edward Heller with a 1967 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. And the winner of the Keeneland Cup is Stephen Locker in his 1991 Acura NSX. Yeah. Definitely not your average car that you see on shows like this, but I can tell you what, as an 81 kid, this had to be one of the coolest pieces of the time. It's definitely um, something you would not expect from Acura, the low bidding four cylinder economy car brand. Uh, they came out with quite the stunning supercar that really put people on their toes back in the day. It looks great in the black, too. If you've never seen it, the videos on YouTube of Ayrton Senna throwing one of these around the racetrack. You know, not only is this a looker, but it was a stunning automobile. Thank you again for bringing it today. Of course, we really can't talk about stunning race cars without also talking about our next class. Uh, class 10, which is the Daytona and Superbird class. Uh, this is the Pin Oak Stud Cup. Uh, many awesome cars. Uh, the first one is a 1969 Dodge Motor Daytona. Brought to us today by Richard and Katrina Freeman. A 1969 Dodge Daytona, brought to us by Gary Jasper and Terry Blankenship. Another 1969 Dodge Daytona, brought by Mark and Sandra Tiffany. We also had a 1970 Plymouth Superbird that came to us from Roy and Phyllis Bird. And a 1970 Plymouth NASCAR Superbird that came to us from Doug Schellinger. The runner-up for the Pin Oak Stud Cup is Mike Fitzgerald with a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. And the winner of the Pin Oak Stowed Cup is Michael and Darlene Charles in their 1969 Dodge Daytona. You know that one is coming. Oops, did I spin the tires? Hi there, beautiful car. Very cool. 
Oh, if you didn't know, she just told us this was her dad's car. I think I read some of your stories, so this is a fun one here. It has, how many miles are on it? 9,147. You know, and I told uh, it was dropped off to Tom this week, and I tried to convince him that it's real easy to disconnect the speedometer, but he just wouldn't listen. Uh, he is, so that is a beautiful piece of art. Thank you so much for bringing it, guys. So gorgeous. How about that, Tom? Congratulations, Steve. Very cool to keep something like that in the family, too, and be able to carry that legacy on. That is. It's quite amazing. I was talking with the, the runner-up, Mike Fitzgerald, earlier. Um, and these cars, they weren't very popular in their day. It was bought often by racers, and so his car was found in a barn with, you know, on its third engine. They were, they were pretty well abused back then, so to find one that has been that kept that pristine is truly amazing. Very, very nice. Our next one up is class 11A. It's the Chrysler pre-1970. This is the Team Valor International Cup. We'll pause for that sound because that's gorgeous. Uh, first up was the 1925 Chrysler Touring from Jim and Betty Stadler. Also from Jim and Betty Stadler, a 1931 Chrysler Roadster. Then a 1934 Chrysler Airflow CU Sedan from Dan and Donna Quarter. Also in the class was a 1949 Chrysler Town & Country Woody Convertible, uh, brought to us today by Leonard and Missy McCann, and a 1949 Chrysler New Yorker Highlander Convertible, brought by Frank and Elaine Cook. The runner-up for the Team Valor International Cup is Tim and Julie Wolf. They brought a 1930 Chrysler Model 70 Royal Coupe. And the winner of the Team Valor International Cup in a 1941 just Chrysler Town and Country is Peter Hayden. <laughs> you know, I think I've probably gone a lot more family road trips if my 2014 Town and Country looked anything like this. Yeah, maybe for the 2017 they can, uh, you know, reinvigorate that a little bit, bring some vintage style. That is, they definitely have quite uh, the unique look and quite a beautiful car here, guys. We really appreciate you bringing it to us. Coming from Ann Arbor, Michigan, it looks like, according to that door. I have a feeling this doesn't see quite as many of the potholes up there anymore, though. I would hope not. Congratulations, team. And for the second half of our marquee class today, Class 11B and the Chrysler Post-1970, this is also a Team Valor International Cup. Uh, first entry was a 1956 Chrysler Imperial four-door, brought to us today by Anthony and Valerie Lacaria. Also a 1957 Chrysler Saratoga hardtop. Brought to us by Mike and Joy McKenna. Also, we have a 1957 Chrysler 300C Special. Uh, brought to us today by Bob and Lena Cornett. We also had a 1960 Chrysler Imperial Custom that came to us from Richard and Latonya Schultz. Doug Eggers brought in a 1967 Chrysler 300 Convertible. And Larry and Sue Kennedy brought a 1970 Chrysler Newport Cordoba. The runner-up for the Team Valor International Cup is Carl Klein with his 1955 Chrysler New Yorker Deluxe Convertible. And the winner of the Team Valor International Cup, uh, John R. and Lynn K. Cote in their 1961 Chrysler New Yorker Town and Country Wagon. Congratulations. Fins and a rear-facing back seat. I don't know if you could have much more fun than that. <laughs> you 
Yeah, like I said, I think Chrysler may have some some vintage work it needs to do with the upcoming ones. This, uh, I can stand a little throwback. That's it. With all the retro styling going on, I don't know how you can pass up the rear-facing seats. And honestly, uh, the wagon, uh, well, it may not fit quite as tall of stuff as my new van does. It'd be a lot cooler to drive around in. Thank you all so much. Moving on to class 12, this is American Performance 1960 to 1975. This is the Overbrook Farm Cup. We had a 1964 Chevrolet Corvette C2 Coupe from Kelly Wooten. A 1965 Ford Mustang Fastback 2 Plus 2 by Lawrence and Tease Booth. Chris McDonald brought us his 1970 Plymouth AAR Cuda. Along with the 1972 AMC Javelin SST brought to us today by Jack and Mary Chain. We also saw a 1974 Pontiac Super Duty Trans Am brought to us by Jim and Michelle Hemster. The runner-up for the Overbrook Farm Cup is a 1969 Chevrolet Chevelle Copo brought to us by Van Hurst. And the winner of the Overbrook Farm Cup is a 1967 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 that came from Hunt and Pat Palmer Ball. Look at that. Gorgeous. That's another one that would just be perfect for a day like this out there. Congratulations. And I think we all have to admit, um, there's a lot of these cars that would also fall in the poster car class pretty well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this being a, a very strong contender of mine. Up next, we're going to have our Chrysler 300 letter car, which, for those who didn't know, this was when Chrysler came out uh, with their new 300 horsepower car, and it was so popular, they, they re-lettered every year because of all the different iterations. So starting off, we had a 1955 Chrysler C300, brought to us by Sid and Krista Rorschach. A 1956 Chrysler 300B, brought to us today by Johnny and Rosemary Slayton. Bill and Beverly Spear brought us a 1957 Chrysler 300C hardtop. And there was a 1959 Chrysler 300E, brought to us today by Guy and Carol Morris. Also, Tony and Christine Rinaldi brought us their 1960 Chrysler 300F convertible. Very cool to have all these uh, these leather cars in one place too. We've got a 1962 Chrysler 300H convertible from Ron and Ann Ganster. Mark and Pauline Overman brought a 1963 Chrysler 300J. We have a 1964 Chrysler 300K from Bill and Betty Swope. A 1965 Chrysler 300L convertible from Ron and Lena Cornett. A 1970 Chrysler Hurst from Joe Gross. If I was told correctly, Tom said we even managed to have more of the letter cars represented than even Chrysler was able to get a couple years ago. So that's a pretty impressive feat. Quite the feat for the Keeneland Concord. Yeah. Uh, the runner-up for the Windstar Farm Cup is a 1958 Chrysler 300D, brought to us by Chad and Jenny Caldwell. And the winner of the Windstar Farm Cup is Don and Sandra Verhoff with a 1961 Chrysler 300G hardtop. All right, beautiful car coming up. Some really interesting styling cues on it. Uh, the slant offset, yeah, you know, wide, you know, wide angle out mirrors. And of course, they were really making some wonderful power for their time in the day. Uh, so just imagine having a car like this go ripping down the floor saying, hey, I don't need to worry about your Corvette. I don't need to worry about your your Camaro, none of those other silly fast cars. I have a 300. Gorgeous car, congratulations to you. Up 
I'm always amazed by the, the work that goes into detail in these two, right down to the smallest details on the tires and wheels. It's a gorgeous car. Congratulations to you. Thanks for bringing it in. Okay, moving on from some of our biggest four-wheel vehicles, let's move on to the two-wheelers. Uh, class 15A was our motorcycles that were pre-1950. This is the Darley America Cup. First, we had a 1938 Indian Four brought to us by Lawrence Cecil. And Ray Corlew brought a 1947 Famous James. The runner-up for the Darley America Cup is Brian Caskey with his 1915 Yale Twin 57. And the winner of the Darley America Cup is Glenn Bewley with a 1949 Vincent HRD Series B Meteor. I believe I hear it. I'm pretty sure it's on the way. There there's, it is. There's something very bright and yellow that apparently is so fast <laughs> it, it just couldn't wait to get up here on the stage. Here we go. Congratulations. You know, we're talking about vehicles that are perfect for a day like this. I don't know you can beat a motorcycle. That's absolutely it. Get out there, have the breeze right in your face. And of course, these were made back when you didn't have roads, didn't, or not as many easy paved roads, so why not just take a motorcycle? You can get it up, around, and down everything you needed to. Motorcycles post-1950, the Darley America Cup. Glenn Muley again brought a 1951 Vincent Touring Rapide. We had a 1960 Heinkel 103A1 from Bjorn Goldberg. Also, we had a 1961 Triumph T20S brought to us today by Ray Corlew. Uh, Glenn Muley brought us a couple more. A 1961 Velocette Venom Clubman and a 1968 Vincent Eagley. The runner-up for the Darley America Cup in a night with a 1952 matchless Club Clubman 500C, well, 500cc, is Steve Pirac. And the winner of the Darley America Cup with the 1964 Honda CA77 Dream Touring 305 is Bjorn Goldberg. Congratulations, that's going to be a tough one to keep clean, too. You often see many motorcycles like the Harley Davidson have called full dressers with all kinds of body cladding. I don't think they could find much more work to uh, cover up and clean up than this beautiful little Honda. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Congratulations. And these are our future classics, 2014 and newer models. This is the Walmart Farm Club Cup. First, we had a 2012 Lotus Lavora S, brought to us by Florian and Cynthia Cap, as well as a 2015 Alfa Romeo 4C Spider, brought to us by Tom and Carol Rossi. We also had a 2015 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat that came to us from Randall and Kelly Taylor. Uh, 2016 Porsche GT4 from David and Susan Hall. And Tim and Carrie Howard brought a 2016 Porsche Boxster Spider. The runner up for the Walmack Farm Cup with a 2016 Mercedes Benz AMG GTS is Randy and Brenda Bibb. And I'm sure you guys have heard me droning on all day about this car because, frankly, how can you not just stare at it? The winner of the Walmart Farm Cup with his 2015 Ferrari La Ferrari, Bill and Martha Bachman. This might be my favorite named car ever. 
Well, as I was talking with him and everybody earlier, uh, the last ultra car that they came out with, they named Enzo after the maker of the company. So the only way a company like Ferrari can say, well, this is going to be even better than our founder, this is the Ferrari, the Ferrari. Hey, guys, thanks, Bill. Congratulations. It's great talking to you today. Congratulations, man. It is gorgeous. one of those cars you're not sure if you really actually saw this in real life or just dreamed it one day. Well, there's no doubt this is just a stunning work of art. I read there's only 499 of them even made, 120 of them barely made it to the States, and uh, don't give it away, but he's told me he's got the convertible option on order too, so. We'll have to see that one next year. I'm so glad to have this in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for coming up here, guys. We'll talk to you later. Steve and Kathy Paul, an 1895 Studebaker Company Pony Wicker Phaeton Carriage. You don't hear too many of the 1800 names. That's the first one I've seen. We also had a 1901 Brewster Station Brown Carriage from Hillcroft Farm Carriage Collection. Also presenting today was a 1929 Studebaker President 8FE brought to us by Randy Still. Before we get to giving out the awards, this was a really unique class. Is Dana Banfield around? He wanted to get going on this neat little piece of information. Here he comes. Hello, hello, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. So, Tom said you had some pretty neat information about what made this class so neat. I'm really pleased with this class, and I, I commend the Keelan Concord for stepping out of the box and presenting a class that really shows a pedigree of four wheels. Of course, it started with horse-drawn, and then those carriage builders went on to build bodies for the elite cars. And we have some great examples here. Um, the uh, Brewster that will be coming up is owned by Hillcroft Farm, and that vehicle was built in 1901 uh, by Brewster and Company. They were able to acquire through the Carriage Association of America the uh, actual build records. So when this carriage was restored, it was restored just right to the factory specs. Uh, the carriage was sold due again in 1901, and then about 1910, it was sold to William Wrigley II, founder of Wrigley Gum. Um, it's still in the Wrigley family. Uh, it, belongs now to, again, Hillcroft Farm, owned by Misty Wrigley Miller, and it was um, uh, given to her after it was spent some time in a museum in California some 15 years ago. Well, that's very impressive, and it's interesting to know that, obviously, back at the turn of the century, um, you were designing both of them. This, you know, it was, uh, it was a class where the same an uh, artist who is designing something comfortable that could be drawn by a horse uh, could also be designed by something powered by that internal combustion engine. So that's why we took the time today uh, to, to recognize uh, both of the options out there. Thank you very much for coming up, Dan. One thing I'd like to add is these were paired particularly together as the owner of this one is dressed as a chauffeur, where this vehicle was designed to be driven by a coachman, uh, the pre predecessor to the chauffeur. Well, that's very, very cool stuff. So we appreciate it. We're going to get, keep moving on here. Um, the runner-up for the Coach Bill Auto was a 1911 locomobile baby to know. Uh, Four-door German Tidal brought to us by Clem and Mary C. Lang. And the runner-up for the Coach Bill Carriages was the Gala Carriage Collection with an 1891 Healy and Company Ladies Wicker Phaeton Carriage. The winner for the coach built was that 1933 Rolls-Royce Phantom II 
uh, by Cy Hanks. And the winner for Coach Belt Carriages is the Walnut Way Carriage Collection with an 1898 Kimball Brothers Park Phaeton Carriage. <laughs> Different kind of horsepower today. Where, where's the coconuts to simulate the sound? <laughs> Unbelievable to see an 1898 model up here in, in this amazing looking condition. That is, it definitely was, it was never probably presumed that it would last this long. Someone has taken an amazing amount of care to, to be able to present it to us. Uh, one more round of applause for all these hand-built coaches. <laughs> Next, I'd like to ask Kelly Rovick to come to the podium to present the People's Choice Award. She's our representative with Keeneland. You might hear it coming. I think that was nothing like a raging bull to wake you up. Yeah, yeah, that one's hard to miss. The People's Choice Award this year goes to Sheldon Cap. This is a 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. Look at that car. It's hard for the ears or the eyes to miss that really. If y'all just noticed, it does have a curved parking feature, so that brings that nose up another inch or two, just to make sure. Um, much like the LaFerrari we just had pass on the stage, uh, these things carry a fair amount of carbon fiber and a pricey bit, so we're more than glad he's able to keep that nose off of our metal grate here. this year in a 1937 Chrysler Imperial C-15 town car brought to us by Howard and Rosalind Crow.
Our, our last winner was obviously a car that was meant to be noticed. This is certainly one that was meant to drive around with peace and quiet in mind. So. Junior judge's choice. If we could have Frank Entwistle up to the stage, please. Frank, here you are, sir. You saw earlier the children's choice, and we also have junior judges. And of course, it's no secret what we want to do is get them involved in the, in the sport that we all love. Uh, or somebody's got to buy our cars when we're not around to drive them anymore. This is a very knowledgeable group, and for the second time now, we have picked the same car that the big judges picked. Um, just to show you how knowledgeable some of these people are, we had several cars in our class that had wood on them. And I was starting to explain that back in the early days, many cars had a wooden framework, and then the metal was put over top of it. And Addie here said, yes, that, little, that wooden frame was made out of white ash. So they've done their homework. The car? is a 1941 Chrysler Town and Country. Thanks for bringing the car out. Thank y'all very much. Nice job. Well, well John, I this is it. We got a big one now. And um, I think your words last year is kind of ring true. So, yeah, so yeah, why don't you go ahead and, and take over here, man. This is the Best of Show Award. So, without further ado, we're going to get this car rolling on up the way here. The 2016 Keeneland Concord Elegance Best of Show Award. You can hear it coming right now. <laughs> this is Glenn and Mary C. Lang with a 1934 Bugatti Type 57 Rumble Seat Roadster. Here is your best of show, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful car. Like I said, we saw this one sneak by earlier, and we just had to have it up here again. So. You can't have it up here enough times, really. That's it. For the second year in a row, we've got a Bugatti winning, and for obvious reasons, they are beautiful, beautiful vehicles. So apparently in 1934 they were worried about a flat tire so much that they gave you two spares. <laughs> hey, you know, redundancy. You cannot beat redundancy. Please, everybody, one more big round of applause for this year's Best in Show. Congratulations. Thank you all for coming. Okay, everybody, that's it. Thank you so much for making this a wonderful show. Please join us next year. The mark next year is going to be Rolls Royce, so we're going to have a great bunch of cars. That is going to be gorgeous. This day. Again, this will be the third week of July, so everyone who came out here today...
How are you today? I'm good, how are you? It's good, it's good. <laughs> Just enjoying all the beautiful automobiles. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> Thank you. 